Hi, this is Heretic, and it's October 1st, 2020. And in this video, I'm going to go over troops and marches. First, let's talk about the different troop types and why, um, why they're important. All right, so let's start with infantry. So infantry are the first um, types of troops to, to meet the opposition. So when you attack, your infantry are on the front lines. Like if you're watching Game of Thrones or... You know, any war movie, any, just imagine a battle out in the field. Um, your infantry are either your, you know, the guys running out with the swords and the shields or the guys following them with the, the spears. So it's the same type of thing with infantry. Your infantry are divided up into two types. You have the guys with the, she with the, the swords, which are the warriors, and they have an increased defense against archers. And your spearmen, who have an increased defense against light cavalry. In infantry, um, the even tiers are the warriors, so they all have the same bonus. And the odd tiers are all spearmen, and they have the same bonus against light cavalry. Okay, so the bonuses are, when I show you the stats in a minute, this, when I show you the stats in a minute, they're the base stats, but whenever a warrior is actually up against an archer, you can add to that. When a spearman is up against an ar um, a light cavalry, you can add to that. All right, so to look at the stats for any tier, as you go through, all of them have this little eye. You can click the little eye, and you get your troop details. And on this, you'll see the health, attack, defense, and speed. So for tier 12, for example, you have uh, 19 health, 8 attack, and 21 speed. On T11, I'm going to go this far in this video. On T11, you have 17, 7, and 18. So 18 defense on tier 11 and 21 defense on tier 12 doesn't sound like a whole lot right so it's only three difference but one thing you have to keep in mind is your stats directly apply to these numbers so at 21 defense um and if let's say you have 8k um infantry defense you it's that means it's eight thousand percent of twenty one, which is sixteen eighty. So the sixteen eighty, then if you go down to the eighteen, <clears throat> it's several hundred below. So when you think about it, it's you're actually the tier twelve is several hundred points better than the T eleven. Once you once you factor in your your statistics, okay. So that that's infantry. The the infantry one thing one other thing. So the the infantry <clears throat> protect your cavalry and your archers from being hit. So until your infantry is gone, your cavalry and your bow bowmen will continue to rain down arrows and you know, run up and slice them with the, um, you know, on the, on the, on the horses <laughs> um, without taking any damage themselves. So the, the infantry are your, your meat shield. They're your, your, your wall that's standing between you and losing. Your infantry are honestly the most important part of your march. But if you have too many of them, then your um, your you don't you won't have enough bowmen and cavalry to to actually kill off um, the the opposition's troops. So you have to balance things out. Okay, so let's go to your cavalry. Okay, so cavalry does not follow the even odd um, exactly like the infantry does. Um, <clears throat> so your tier 12 is your light cavalry. Light cavalry have an added bonus 
um, when they're attacking bowmen. Your tier 11 is your heavy cavalry, and they have an increased attack against warriors. Your 10 is light, 9 is light, so you have you know, two lights in a row, so it's not going to follow exactly. Then you have a heavy for your tier 8, your tier 7 is light, your tier 6 is heavy, and so on. Right? So the same thing works applies here that, you know, applied to your infantry. You can go in and you can look. Uh, <clears throat> now, cavalry are, the, are just behind your infantry. So in infantry, you have your warriors first, followed by the spearmen. Then you have your, on your cavalry side, you have your light cavalry, and then you have your heavy cavalry. <clears throat> so defense is still important for, for all troop types, but because they, they're still between your meat shield and your glass cannon, which is your, your bowman, um, who put out the most amount of damage, that defense is, is pretty important here. And you'll see that in these stats where the attack and the defense are pretty pretty darn close to each other. So here you have, on your T12, you have 11 attack and 10 defense. And on your, um, your T11, <clears throat> you have 11 attack and 9 defense. Okay. So let's one more time. 11 and 10, 11 and 9, almost the same. The difference that you're going to get is in their bonus. So the 11s are great against the warriors. The 12s are great against the bowmen. Okay, so these guys are going to rush in and kill bowmen. <clears throat> these guys are going to rush up to the front and take on the infantry. So the, the good thing about the 12s, they have the same attack as the 11, the 12s can go in and they can hit those bowmen and knock them down. Once that happens, you're not going to be taking very much damage <clears throat> and you should be able to, to win the fight. Okay, so let's go to your, your one-hit wonder, your, your glass cannon over here. <clears throat> Okay, you have, on your bowman, you have 12 attack, 7 defense, and 6 health. <clears throat> and you may think, well, you know, this has 12 attack and my cavalry has 11. That's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Same thing go with the stats. You know, the difference, you know, it's one difference, but over, you know, a percentage of <clears throat> stat increase, it's, you know, can, can add up. Plus, think about it, your bowmen are standing in the back. They're the least likely to get killed. Your infantry are going to be the first to go, then your cav, and this whole time, the bowmen keep attacking. <clears throat> so your bowmen are way in the back, shoot, you know, letting loose with their arrows. So when you look at your reports, your bowmen will kill a lot more than your infantry or your cav. <clears throat> Right, so the T11, um, same thing, 12 attack. So your 12, have 12 attack, 7 defense, 6 health. Your 11s have 12 attack, 6 defense, and 5 health. <clears throat> Again, the big difference between your 12s and your 11 is going to be on your bonus, where your bow is going to knock out your calf, all calf types, see that? And your 11s are going to have increased, the bonus is going to be against one type of infantry. Okay, so your 12s are going to just kill all types of cavalry with a bonus. Again, I'm sitting, repeating. Um, and your 11s are going to have against just one type of infantry, which in our Crit, you know, you may not have many T11, um, and, you know, once you're T12, you may not have many T12, T11 um, spearmen to even kill. <clears throat> you have some, 
but not as many as your T12. Okay, so next let's look at marches. So on the marches, um, <clears throat> the new thing, what everybody's doing, and it's important, and we kind of talked about that when we talked about what the bonuses are on each of the troop types. Well, the new um, type of march that everyone is using is a crit march. A couple things to say about that. If you're below 30 um, crit percentage, which you get, and I'm going to show you where that is. All right, so you can increase your crit here. So you have this undying oath. Each level of these will give you 10% with a maximum of 40. Right now I have 36%. Right. If you're below 30%, then the benefits of the actual crit march aren't going to be as high. Um, <clears throat> So what does the crit do? The, the crit, when it procs, when your crit procs, it gives you 180% of your stats. So if you have um, <clears throat> 100 on you know stat, it'll be 180. So it's going to go up. It's, it's significant when you add that up to you know your 4,000s and your 5,000s. And it's against it's across the board, so 180 percent of all of your stats when you crit. So it can be the difference between you know when we talk if you have a high crit percent and you're a tier 11, and you're taking on a tier 12. If you do it right, you can smoke that tier 12. So let's look at <clears throat> to be able to get that crit type. So you have maybe you have a 30 percent crit percentage, right? To get that 30% crit, to get that 180% on your stats, you can have a maximum of six troop types and tiers. So if you have your your tier 12, you know, this is this is mine. I have, you know, three with my tier 12, four, five, and six. And that's all of the tiers that I have. That's all the troop types that I have. There's six different troop types. That's the maximum you can have whenever you're <clears throat> if if you when you're fighting, either on you know you're in a, you're garrisoning a tower, you're garrisoning um, Avalon. You're you have a mega rally against uh, Avalon, or if you're individually attacking someone. You're going to want crit in all of those. So a maximum of six different troop types. On offense, what I like to do is have 30% um, um, infantry, tier 12 infantry, 10% um, tier 12 cavalry, 5% uh, tier 11 cavalry, 15% um, tier 11 bow, and 10% uh, tier 9 bow and those are all for the bonuses okay, that's the reason I went with the tier 9 instead of the tier 10 bow because of the bonus that it has okay so that's on offense on defense you're gonna wanna go heavy infantry so you would want like 35% um, tier 12 infantry you know, 25% tier 11 infantry, um, and then, you know, you want 20% tier 12 bow, 20% tier 11 bow, and then put in some uh, tier 9 bow with whatever's left. Something around that. Right now, you re and, and I'll have that all in, in the comments, right now you really don't need a calculator. Um, because once you know the percentages, um, and when I say calculator, you, you don't need to go to another site to look at a calculator to punch a bunch of numbers in and, and let it tell you um, the percentages that come out. Um, you can use a calculator on your computer or on your phone, and you can figure this out by yourself. You can say, 
you know, I have 380, um, here, I'll, I'll do it right here so you can see it. So I have um, 380, um, 310, and I want 30% of that. So I'll do a mul multiply times 0.3. That'll give me my 30%. That's the number of tier 12 uh, bow or infantry that I, that I want in my march. So once you know the percentages of each uh, troop type, on, because there's only six, it's relatively easy to do by yourself. And once you see the numbers, you, you don't. it doesn't have to be exact. I say 10, it could be 11. You know, it could be 15. Um, play around with it. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, okay, how many of each troop type should I have? And, and the, the real, the true answer is it just depends, right? It depends on who you're fighting against. You know, use your bonuses and use your tier types um, for the enemy that you're facing. So if you do a scout <clears throat> and they have a ton of tier 12 infantry, just a ton that you're going to have to eat through, then you're going to want the, the bow and the cavalry that are specifically geared, they have the bonuses to kill those infantry. And it's the same with whatever you see in those... Um, in your scouting reports. Okay, so <clears throat> when I talked about uh, the, the battle wave formation, you know, the order that happens, um, this is something that's not, you know, available from KOA. So it's a lot of just trial and error where we've seen this. <clears throat> but the, the battle wave formation order right now is your, your infantry warriors, so your your 12, 10, um, 8, and, you know, your evens, and then your infantry spearmen, which are your odds, which are 11, the 9, the 7, 5, etc. Then your light cavalry, which is your tier 12, tier 10, tier 9, tier 7. Um, your heavy cavalry after that, which is your tier 11 and your tier 8. Then your archers, which are your tier 12, tier 10, tier 8, tier 7, and then your crossbowmen, which are your tier 11 and tier 9s. So let's spend a few minutes at the end of this video and kind of go through an actual battle report. I picked this one from last night. It's against uh, a level 44 that has almost very similar stats, um, and I don't think any T13s are involved in it. So it, it's, and you, as you can see here, um, in all honesty, they, they probably won because I'm defending a um, tower here in Netherfall. And I got hit. They hit me over and over and over um, here. Um, you can see the heroes that we're using. Heroes do come into play. So when I said things like, you know, the infantry takes all of the attacks before um, your cavalry and your bowmen actually get hit, that's not exactly true and that the heroes can override that with their special skills and they can actually uh, um, bypass your your infantry or um, like these do and your uther um, hero will actually you know has a five percent proc of doing additional damage to um, other troop types other than infantry so you know it, it kind of you have to look at the battle report and kind of understand um, what's what's going on so in this one you can see it, it's pretty similar um they have more bowman um tomes that's in another video we're going to talk about tomes and in another video we're going to talk about um heroes as well we're going to go into a lot of detail on heroes and which ones you should use and when you should use them um one, one thing of particular note here and, and this is the reason why they did so many kills is because they have a crit march on their on their offense and we did not have a crit march on our um, on our garrison <clears throat> so that came into play here and that you know that's the 180 percent um, that you don't see it's not reflected here but in the actual waves that are happening um, they can 40% chance of procking 180% um, of your stats. So it's uh, 
definitely adds and, and helps. Um, but overall, it's, it's very similar stats. Um, you know. so, so let's look at the, the actual attack here. <clears throat> so again, the, these are the, the heroes that are being used. Um, <clears throat> you can see here that the cavalry will actually will actually attack the cavalry and bowmen directly and avoid all of the um, infantry defense here. But we'll, we'll talk about we'll go into detail on um, heroes in, in another video. <clears throat> but keep that in mind as, you, as you're looking at the actual damage here. So, so here's my troops. I had some T12 um, infantry, the cavalry, the um, bowmen, and I had some T11 um, bow, right? <clears throat> and, and on mine, so I, I killed, my infantry killed 5,300, my cavalry killed 1,300, my bow killed 107,000, right? Um, and my T11 bow killed another 7,400. So you can see the big difference that the bow does compared to the infantry and the um, cavalry. As far as, as my troops being wounded, my infantry took the brunt. That's what I would expect. That's, that's what I want. And my, um, my, my bow took less and my cavalry took a lot less, right? Um, for another player, um, he, he put in a big mix of, of different uh, tier types. And you can see because in, in a rally or a garrison where there's multiple people involved, even though I mega it so that everybody has my stats, the lower tier types will take a lot more damage than your higher tier types. So if I have all tier 12 and someone else has a bunch of tier 8s in there, the tier 8s are going to get eaten up before my tier 12s even get hurt. So you can see that here where he lost, you know, 5,200, uh, I mean, 52,000 of his tier 10 uh, infantry. He lost 6,000 of his tier 9 infantry, but he didn't have a lot to begin with. He lost all of his 10, though. That's that's pretty crazy. He lost all of his his um, his tier seven bowmen. Um, you can you can see. So they're getting eaten up. So that's using those heroes are allowing um, the the cavalry to bypass the infantry and hit the bow and the cavalry. And you can see that play out in here. And it's really interesting. So same thing here, where Lord Jack, <clears throat> his tier 10 um, destroyers got eaten up. And then just kind of a, a little bit of each. And he went with a pure mix march. And Zavi, he had tier nine um, infantry. He lost a few of those, killed a few. Tico, he had some tier nine and, and tier eight. Tier nine um, infantry and tier eight cavalry. See, his infantry took the brunt. His, his cavalry didn't really get hurt much. Over here, you can see the same thing where Asia had uh, his tier 12 um, infantry. Um, it took the brunt of all of his losses, right? That's what you want. Here again, the infantry took the bulk of the losses. <clears throat> now, this is the person who attacked. So they went in with 121,000 uh, tier 12 infantry. They went with tier 12 uh, cavalry, tier 12 um, bow, tier 11 cavalry, and tier 11 bow. Not a bad march, <clears throat> but what happens? They went in with too few 
obviously they went in with way too few um, tier 12 infantry because all of those died. When those died, then the phantoms, the bowmen, got eaten up. And look, you, you can kind of see how it plays out. So you have, first you have, these are the waves, right? First you see the infantry. Then you see the, um, the, light, the light cavalry. Then you see the heavy cavalry. Then you see the bows. So you can kind of see it play out. First the infantry got eaten up. Then the cavalry all got eaten up. And then it went into killing the bowmen. The bowmen and the bowmen are the only ones that survived. So, I mean, that's what you would expect in these marches. And that's kind of what we went through in this video. So I hope this helps out. Um, I hope you, you know, look at the one piece of advice we can have from here is you have to understand who you're up against. If you're up against someone with a mixed marks march and you go in with... Um, and, and about an equal number of troops, and you go in with a good march, a good crit march, you're going to blow them away. If you're fighting someone with, a, you know, millions of troops and relatively similar um, troop types, right, that they have tier 12 and you have tier 12, um, and you're going in with your 400 or 500 a march, you're going to lose. You may do some damage to them, depending on your stats, but you're going to lose. You need to understand what troop types they have. You need to understand, more or less, kind of guess, maybe, what their their stats are. If you can just, you know, have someone throw a small march against them and get a report, that will help you. Or someone else who lost. Right? Look at those reports and kind of understand what you're up against. Don't go in and just throw away your troops. Understand your enemy first. Then build a good march, including your, your heroes, which we'll talk about in the next video. And then when you go in, you can give yourself, doing the right things, you can give yourself a pretty good chance of always winning. And I, I really hope this helps, and um, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.